Van D, a dynamic leader with decades of experience building companies and crushing sales. He's been there and done that. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, my name is Van D. Inspiring audiences across the country to do it too. Here's Van. Well, hello everybody and welcome to my podcast. Today I'm pretty excited because we're going to do a three-part series on 23 crucial points to guarantee your success in real estate. Now, just so you know, even though you may not be in real estate, these are the same principles and fundamentals that will benefit anybody in sales, anybody in customer service, or anybody in business in general. So as most of you know, I started my real estate career in 1983. I was 23 years old. It was my first real job. I was on straight commission and I had no money. And I was in a strange city that I knew no one, Dallas, Texas. So I had to learn all this on my own. And to add to that luxury, I had no mentor. So I had to learn all this on my own, and um, it paid dividends because I made it happen. So in this three-part series, this is part one where we're going to cover several crucial points to guarantee your success in real estate. And I'm going to get right to it. So when you get into real estate, just like in any career, number one is you have to understand why you picked this career. And that goes, like I said, for everything. You have to think about what motivated you to get into the the real estate business? What motivated you to get your license? Are, Are you in this business because you want to become wealthy? Are you in the business because you want to build a name for yourself? You want to meet people. You have to understand why you picked this career. Now, I want to tell you something. The majority of the people that get into real estate do it because they want to be wealthy. Real estate is a career that has no ceiling. There are several careers and industries out there that you can be the top salesman and you have a cap on what you can make in real estate that doesn't happen. You can make as much as you want. So a lot of people use the real estate career, their real estate career, to become wealthy. And as you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a great motivator. Actually, it's one of the most powerful motivators is to be financially independent. So once again, number one, is you have to understand why you picked this career to be in real estate. It's it's sit down with yourself and, and, and say, why am I doing this? What am, what's my motivation? What are my goals? Because once you do that, it will help you accomplish what you set out to do. And like I said, this is for any career. If you're at a job now that you don't like, and you want to go to another career, you got to ask yourself why. And it can't be because I don't like what I'm doing now and I just want to do something else. So I happen to be um, madly in love with real estate. I think real estate is a, is a vehicle that will get you anywhere and everywhere you want to go. So once again, number one, understand why you pick this career. Number two, You have to develop a passion. People aren't going to want to do business with somebody that's just passing through and that doesn't act like they own their career. So number two is you have to develop a passion for real estate. If you're not passionate about real estate, then you need to either find a new profession immediately or be willing to make real estate your passion. Customers Customers are going to have a hard time wanting to purchase or sell the biggest investment of their lives with the help of someone who isn't in it wholeheartedly. They will have an even harder time wanting to refer you. And I want to tell you something. Like in any sales and business career, referrals are the name of the game. You know what referrals cost you? Nothing. It doesn't cost you a dime 
to get somebody to refer you. They, you just have to be good at what you do and you have to be passionate. Now, I want to tell you something. My passion made up for my lack of knowledge when I first got in real estate. It took me a while. I, I'm, I'm a slow learner. It, it took me a while to develop, to learn as, you know, all the ins and outs of real estate. But people wanted to do business with me because I was passionate. I still am passionate. Any industry, you have to be passionate. I don't care what it is. But in real estate, it is a have to. So that's number two. Develop a passion for, you for real estate. Number three, make a commitment to real estate. Real estate is not an overnight success career. It means consistently laying foundation and constantly learning new things that will someday make you an expert. You must be willing to be a sponge and soak up knowledge about what you should be doing as well as what you shouldn't do. So, this is true in any industry that you're in. If you don't make a commitment to it, you're not going to be good at it. Make a commitment to what you're doing. Do things that are way above and beyond with it, what is deemed necessary in your industry. When you make a commitment to real estate, it means you're making an effort to learn as much as possible whenever you have the opportunity to do so. So when you learn this, apply what you've learned. You will be rewarded greatly for making a commitment to this field. So tell me something. Who wouldn't want to work with somebody that is committed? I know I do. I, I would never want to work with somebody that says, you know, I think I'm okay at it. Hey, so how do you like real estate, Van? Yeah, you know, it's good. It's it's a living. <laughs> it's a job. I don't want to work with that guy. It's like my commitment also surpasses all the down times in real estate. Even when times have been very tough, and I've been through four bad markets, so-called bad markets, and people in real estate are telling their clients it's really bad out there, homes aren't selling, this and that. I never took that road. I was committed to real estate. So when people asked me how the market is because they hear it's bad, I would always say, you know what, I have to work a little bit harder, but there's still people out there buying and selling houses, and thank God they're using me. So commitment's huge. Number three, make a commitment to real estate. Number four, Think of ways you can stand out from other real estate professionals. Now, I could spend three days without coming up for air talking about this topic. Think of ways you can stand out from other real estate professionals. Once you have the basics and fundamentals of real estate down, then it's time to start thinking about how to stand out in a crowded field. And this is a crowded field in every part of the country. There are all kinds of ways to separate yourself from the pack. So when I sold real estate, and I still do today, I think a lot of you know that to make me a more efficient and relevant speaker and sales trainer, it makes it a lot more comfortable for me because I'm in it. I'm still listing and selling houses, maybe not a ton, but I'm still in it. So I know how to guide you and give you positive direction. I made a daily effort to stand out in the crowd. I wanted to be unique. I didn't want to be, um, you know, well, here's all the 2,500 real estate agents in our town, and Van Deeb is one of them. I wanted it to be, there's 2,500 real estate agents in, in our town, and Van Deeb stands alone. I wanted to stand out in a crowd. I wanted to brand myself as being very unique. One of the things, believe it or not, that made me stand out in the crowd was my reputation for getting back with people immediately. That helped me stand out in the crowd because it's not a lot of people take that as a priority. If you called me Monday morning at 10 o'clock, it's because you want to talk to me Monday morning at 10 o'clock. So I made it my mission to get back with you that same day so I let you know how important you are to me. I'll always have that attitude. But 
you have to think of ways that you can stand out from other real estate professionals. I want to tell you, I've got enough to tell you where you can be separated from the pack and be unique in your industry and in your city. You're welcome to call me. I'd love to coach you on, on, on ideas to make you unique and one of a kind in your industry. I was also known for being confident. I'm a very, very confident person. So that helped me stand out in my field. I was not afraid to say to somebody, you know what, there's a lot of really, really great realtors in our city, but nobody can compete with me. I was comfortable. I'm saying I'm comfortable saying that today. I still believe that today. We have a lot of great real estate professionals in our city, but they can't compete with me. And I'm not afraid to tell people that. You want to work with somebody like that? Yes. Do they stand out in a crowded field? Absolutely. So I'm not going to touch on this much because we might get to it later. But one of the ways that I stood out in a crowd is I did a lot of charity work. I used to sit on top of a roof for Children's Hospital, and I wouldn't come down until I raised a certain amount of money, usually $10,000. Is that unique? Yes. Did it benefit my career? Absolutely. So a lot of things you can do to be, to be uh, recognized as a unique real estate professional. So that's number four. Think of ways you can stand out from other real estate professionals. Number five, this is where I really believe that I excelled more than anything. And number five is ask for help in accomplishing your goals. Well, I tell you what, as Percy Ross said, you have got to ask for your opportunities. Asking is, in my opinion, the world's most powerful and neglected secret to success and happiness. So I believe in this, ladies and gentlemen, so much about asking for help. I wrote a book called The Power of Asking. Actually, that's my latest book. And I had to share my stories about if I didn't ask, I wouldn't have received. It's huge. And in real estate, number five, you have to, have to ask for help in accomplishing your goals. So when you ask for people ask people to refer you, um, you're basically saying to them, you're going to help me with my career. You're not asking them to borrow money. You're not asking them to give you a ride. You're not asking for anything but just please refer me. So one of the ways that I would ask for referrals is I always want to ask them about how their business is. And it may go something like this. Hey, John, good to see you. How's your business? Great. Hopefully he's going to ask, ask me how mine's going. If not, I'll offer it. But it takes such little time to say, if you know anyone who wants to buy or sell a home, I can't tell you how grateful I would be if you gave them my name and number or referred me. And you know what, John? I guarantee you they'll get back to you and they'll thank you for referring me. Especially after they've experienced my level of service. I know it sounds simple, ladies and gentlemen, but it is. That took about, six, about 30 seconds. You say that to 10 people a day and watch what happens to your business. It will skyrocket. Now, I want to tell you something. To me, this is the basics, fundamentals of real estate. This is the basics and fundamentals of real estate. You master asking people to do business with you. And don't be afraid to tell them your goals. I've got a pretty cool story about, about um, asking people to help me and showing them a visual of what my goals are. And... It just makes it a lot more fun to to uh, ask people for help, and people want to people want to know what what your motivation is. So number five is ask for help 
in accomplishing your goals. This is just all reminders, ladies and gentlemen. Use this podcast. Come back to it over and over. And if you're in real estate, after listening to these three parts, you have no excuse for not being a rock star. You absolutely do not have an excuse for being successful in real estate once listening to this podcast. Number six, invest 15 minutes a day in expanding your knowledge. So what I mean by that is turn off your phones, get away from humans, everything, and spend 15 minutes a day either getting on the internet and Googling something about real estate. I don't care what it is. Make a point of learning something, anything about real estate, whether it comes from a local or national source. You can navigate real estate informational websites, um, local or national um, outlets to learn something, something that is involved in real estate that has to do with your, in, with your industry. Maybe it has to do with mortgage rates. So the purpose of this is it's not only going to help you become more knowledgeable about real estate, but it's going to help you become an authority. You have to make this part of your daily schedule. Ladies and gentlemen, in real estate, we're helping people with the biggest investment of their lives. Let's learn as much as we possibly can. Force yourself to learn something new every day. And then share, share what you have learned with as many people as possible. If you don't have, if you really don't have 15 minutes a day to set aside for this purpose, even five minutes a day will be better than nothing. You know, maybe you subscribe to a monthly or weekly publication, and there's several real estate websites in, informative for, through the National Association of Realtors you can get daily on your phone. Uh, and use, use this resource. You know, I can't tell you how many people I know that are in real estate that never use the resources that the National Association of Realtors give you. You're paying for this, so use it. The more you learn about real estate and the more you share it with others, the more you will be seen as a trusted authority by your customers and your peers. You know, even, this sounds kind of crazy, but even sitting in a steam room with a bunch of dudes in the morning after my workout, I was not afraid to look to the person next to me and say something that has to do with real estate. Even if the average price has gone up or, you know, the, the inventory is down or the inventory is up or the market, it's a seller's market, buyer's market, something that would let that room know I'm the expert. So number six is invest 15 minutes a day in expanding your knowledge. Number seven, and this will be the final characteristic of what will make you successful in real estate for part one of this podcast. Number seven, this is huge. Join groups of like-minded people, okay? When I started my real estate career, which is a long time ago, I joined tips clubs, networking groups, business-to-business -business organizations so I could meet as many like-minded people as I possibly could within the time available that I had. The key phrase here is, ladies and gentlemen, be around like-minded people. I was looking for people who wanted to succeed people who were involved in those groups for the same reason I was, to develop relationships and to give and receive referrals. I think today, now more than ever, you have so many choices to get involved with a good active business connection group. Back in my day, we didn't have a lot um, that were as, as powerful as the Chamber of Commerce. I really dug deep and got involved with the local Chamber of Commerce you know, it cost me $400 to be a member, and I want to tell you something, one of the best thing I ever did because I was around like-minded business people. And that will catapult you when you get a chance to talk about your trade. I do want to tell you, stay away from these networking groups that their focus is on partying. Their focus is on 
um, you know, happy hours and this and that. You want to be, and there's several, there's so many of them out there. I know you can be successful. Um, just be around those that they're serious business people. They want to have fun, but they're serious business people. And ones that you get an opportunity to give a one minute commercial about yourself every meeting. So they're out there. They're, they're out there. And um, don't be afraid to visit these groups. Don't be afraid to visit um, and not make a commitment until you know you're comfortable. So number seven, join groups of like-minded people. You can't keep your real estate career a secret. You just can't. So you got to spread the word. So these are seven characteristics and crucial points that will guarantee your success in real estate. And for that matter, in any career. This is going to wrap up the part one of this podcast. I hope you got something out of it. I love speaking to all of you. And please, um, after you're done with this, when you get a chance, listen to part two and part three. And please make sure if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the Van D podcast. I want you getting this powerful information immediately that's going to help you with your career. As of right now, subscriptions are free. So you're grandfathered in. Get on there and sign up. Anyway, thank you and um, have a great day. Make it productive. And I hope you listen to part two and part three. Thank you. A Parkville Media Production.